So what are the understanding? It's a part of India. One and three apply. It's an Indian state. But I have a political compromise in which sub-article one has how it will operate. That's the compromise. But sub-article three is to put the compromise to an end. And I reserve that power. And I lo your lordship will see it from another point of view. There's another point of view. Till the arrangement is in place, unlike other states, where the constitution sets out legislative powers in the seventh schedule in absolute terms. And you need a very elaborate mechanism to tinker with those uh, seventh schedule. It has to be 50% states voting, etc. Your lordship knows the difference. Here, there was a political agreement and the whole circumstances, including, as Mr. Angar spells out, the, 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 uh, the specter of uh, the United Nations, which today is, of course, irrelevant, but at that time was very relevant the uh, problems in the state. So there was a agreement which is embodied in B, which has concurrence. But if this led to a situation which ultimately prevented the purpose of 370, the purpose of 370 was not to create a permanent divide within the constitution. And there are lots of material have been shown to you. It was a phased integration. I'm going to deal, Manat, Dr. Dhawan has raised a very interesting point of asymmetric federalism, whether that became part of the basic structure. I'm going to deal with it separately. But the historical material available to a court, in your law, we have, Manat, unlike certain other courts, we have always looked at historical material, especially for articles like this. There was a safety valve in sub-article 3, that if the political compromise in sub-article 1 fails, to achieve the purpose at any time it might become necessary to pull the plug and sub article 3 is that plug now if one looks at it that way the whole thing falls in place we kept the framers of the constitution kept with the president the power to do away with this special arrangement yes. and history will not bear testimony to the foresight and wisdom of those who not despite the criticism at that time and the political debate which has which must, in a democracy, you must always have the noise of a democracy, Mr. Bhutto used to say. The noise of the democracy is the most essential element of a democracy. So it's, this has been the subject of debate. But your Lordship has seen the entire history of how phase by phase this has been narrowed down. The divide has been narrowed. More and more subjects were added. More and more alignment was brought about. Because the historical perspective of 370 is very important. The troubled relations... While there's always was a hope the relations with the neighboring country would be on good terms, the history of Kashmir did give rise to apprehensions. And the Lordship has seen all the material. So border state with all its sensitivities is what compelled finally the Constituent Assembly to agree to the special arrangement. But with their wisdom, they said, while you phase it in, you have the power to pull the plug. And this is what I call the contextual interpretation. So the plain language, pure text, and the context. What is the context, uh, Mr. Salve? How is it distinct from yes. the historical background or the plain the, yeah, the historical The context is that this read by itself, forget the history, this read by itself shows that in sub-article 1, there is a divide in the legislative list base aligned to not the constitutional general 7th schedule, but to an instrument of accession. Because broadly, the idea was aligned with the instrument of accession. That's how the powers will be shared. And a partial application of the Constitution of India, not in its entirety, but such other provisions. That's the D. That's the context. With a safety valve in three. And Malad, the history of this provision also tells us it may be difficult to find a logic in each of these because these were a political compromise. Why was the Constituent Assembly put there? That was a compromise. A lot of things are done to assuage ruffled feathers. There were two approaches. One was the jackboot saying, doesn't matter, things will settle down. Don't agree to anything special for Kashmir. The other was the other extreme saying, if the legitimacy of the accession is being questioned and there is a popular uprising, accommodate that. This was the compromise. So, one cannot search for too much logic. This was the compromise form. And we must therefore, Malad, the safest thing for a court, in my very respectful submission, as a matter of constitutional interpretation of such provisions, 
And such provisions are essentially political, and I don't mean pol political in its pejorative sense. I mean it political as the in its constitutional sense. The court has always said you must give it the widest possible meaning. In fact, Manod, I'll give your lordship that passage. Justice Pandian, I think Justice Pandian, in his majority opinion, where he upheld the ab abolition of the privy purse, where your lordships upheld the abolition of the privy purse, he says that our constitution was meant to be flexible in these areas. I'll give your lordship the exact passage. The fact that the ground realities would change in Jammu and Kashmir and 370 would accommodate was one of first recognized by your lordship in the Makbul Damnu case, which has been cited. Now, two things, my lord, your lordship will note. Applying or disapplying provisions of the constitution. No, Mr. Sahaja, I could not get this argument. Yeah, yes. I, I, may I just restate the point, now? Clause D relates to not 370, but other provisions of the constitution. Absolutely. And they can be applied, disapplied, or with such modifications as the president considers appropriate. And that is with the concurrence of that government. Yes. Correct, my lord. This was meant to operate much beyond the Constituent Assembly also, because that concurrence would continue for all forever. There would always be a state government. But state government, what that state government is another matter. There would, there would always be a state government. But disapplying 370 was carved out and put in three. Now that can't be a provision limited in time to the existence of the Constituent Assembly. And that is what explains perhaps why the recommendation rather than concurrence. Mr. Sarve, your voice was cracking just a little bit, you know, when you were making this, the last part of your argument. Yes. Maybe, uh, I'll, I'll repeat it, Marat. Yeah, uh, Disapplying 370 itself comes under sub-article 3. Right. And that is why perhaps the framers of the constitution scaled it down to recommendation instead of concurrence. And that to put it in a proviso that when there is a constituent assembly, during the life of the constituent assembly, if you decide to modify 370 or disapply 370, because the whole purpose of the constituent assembly was to work, to try and find this area of accommodating both. That's so if I know. Uh, Mr. Salve, we got your point. Yeah, that that's all. The... This is a proviso. Yes. To, it uses the word recommendation and it doesn't yes. say if there is a recommendation. We got that yes. point. We got that line of argument. Because that model logically takes me to my next point that the Ajit Mills principle, as Justice Krishna has explained in Ajit Mills, in the context of a law made by parliament, if you say this is abuse of power in political legislation, it's an argument of competence, not of motive. That is not the Ajit Mills principle. Your Lordship knows when the first law was made saying uh, if you've collected illegal sales, sales tax, which is not chargeable, if you've collected, you pay. The argument was this this is tolerable legislation because you're taking away. But Mr. Salve, even if it is a legislative power, yes. as you say it is, and probably it is, it's amenable to judicial review on the ground of Article 14. A legislative power cannot be challenged on the ground of malafides. So you can exactly. say that Parliament did something because of a malafide intent, because you don't attribute malafides to a collective body of individuals. That's the reason for That's it. That's correct, Malat. More than that. Nagaraj, when they re reduced the age of retirement, uh, our court said you can't challenge uh, the reduction in the age of retirement on the grounds that Parliament was acting malafide because it's a collective correct. body. Malafide that is, is something which you attribute to an individual. More, more than that, Malat, your lordships have always said where it comes to colorable device, supplementary, and all these. Actually, they started that. It is really a competence a argument. Colorable exercise of power in Tulok, our court said. It really means that though competence. you are purporting to exercise power under one entry, you yes. have to be transgressed into another entry. So it's really a question of absence of power, legislative. It's a competence power. argument. It's a competence argument. Yes. And it's not the Wednesbury unreasonableness. But equally, Article 14 would be attractive. Well, 14 be the test of Article 14. Well, 14 can have no application to an Article 370 sub Article 3 situation. Of course, legislative power you can. If you make a rule which is plainly discriminatory, you can strike it down on violating 14. Of course, because uh, if if Article 13 applies, if Article 13 applies, the whole panoply of uh, fundamental rights apply. 
But therefore, assuming that this is a legislative power, it is not immune to challenge on the ground of violation of fundamental rights. Correct. Fundamental rights, whether a 370 sub article 3 disapplying article 370 is at all amenable to fundamental rights? Question mark. I'll tell you, I'll address your lordship for a, for a minute on that. Because this is a relationship between the union and a unit of that union. We are now units of that union. There may be parts of that relationship which create rights in favor of individual citizens. But right? if, if it affects an individual... The classical part of that, the provision of the, on, on, on the right of residence, an individual, for instance, can say that I and people belong to my class have the exclusive right of residence in this state. By bringing in others, you are affecting my right under Article 14. Whether there is substance or not is a different thing altogether. But it's amenable to that challenge. You can't say that the challenge is immune. Well, Lord, I, I, I would respectfully submit applying or disapplying the constitutional provision would not give an individual citizen a right. Because I'll tell you, Lord, if I, this takes us back to the basic principle of this is adjusting the accession. Now, my Lord, in international law, for example, a, a, a citizen can never assert that I had certain rights under an earlier legal regime and now there is an accession, those rights should be continued. Lordships have rejected that, consistent following the principle of international law. You have only such rights as are available to you within the territory. Now, in that, if there is a discrimination, you can challenge. Today, my Lord, how, which constitutional regime will apply in Jammu and Kashmir is more, in, in one sense, almost a constituent power. So, my Lord, Article 14 challenge on the ground that I was a citizen, I was living in Kashmir, nobody else was allowed to enter here, now you've taken away my rights. That argument will not be open. That's quite apart from, of course, the submission of the solicitor that by the abrogation, you expanded the panoply of rights which are individual, uh, which an individual in Jammu and Kashmir has. You're no, not I'm not taking that. an extreme case. Can an individual come and say, I had a right to live here, splendid isolation. You've taken away that right and now all Indians have the rights, which I earlier had as a special right. Your contention is that the resident's right to live in Jammu and Kashmir is not taken away. Nothing. Their rights are expanded by applying the whole of the Indian constitution. Nobody has a vested right in a state of governance in that sense. And Sabat when 370 is a part of the constitution where the president has a power to disapply the constitution. If he disapplies the constitution, how can a citizen complain? A resident of that state. 